Hi, welcome to the Life Itself podcast. Uh, my name's Ailey. Um, I do media and communications with Life Itself. I also do quite a bit of research. Um, and I'm joined today by Theo Cox. And we're going to have a wee chat about what it is that Life Itself is up to at the moment. Um, a sort of new direction that we're excited to take um, with Life Itself Labs. So Theo, do you want to maybe kick us off a wee introduction to what's going on? And yeah, tell us. Thanks so much, Aidy. So yeah, hi everyone. Um, people might see my face pop up here and there over the, the past couple of years. So yeah, I'm, I'm Theo. Um, have been working with Life Itself for coming on two years now, and that's really flown by. Um, sort of particularly heading up our project delivery. Um, but in recent months, with the the launch of of our new subsidiary, I suppose Life Itself Labs. I'm taking a leader out around that area of the work and I'm really excited to, to explore a little bit around what that amounts to and how it fits into life itself's broader vision for change. Cool. Well, do you want to just, yeah, I guess we can dive in. How does Life Itself Labs fit into what, what we do? Sure. So Labs is essentially kind of the, the part of our organisation focusing on what we might call systems transformation so you know alternative institution and governance design and alternative economics and kind of you know issues around technology and society and i would suppose broader processes of of sense making around around complex topics um so this stands in quite a bit of contrast to some of the work that people might more commonly associate with, with life itself, namely our, our work on, you know, our transformational residential programs and inner development. Um, and while life itself is, is committed to the, the primacy of being, as we call it, namely that true social transformation has got to start with and have at its core sort of inner transformation, we're also very aware that that inner transformation needs to be both supported by and i suppose matched with um transformation in the broader structures and systems which kind of organize our society you know i think there's kind of a quote that i'm no doubt bastardizing horribly that it's quite hard to reach enlightenment when you're starving um and i think all of us that have come across kind of the really rampant socioeconomic deprivation that pervades you know uh, my country in Britain but you know the world over we can see that that can both be a real real blocker to the the inner transformation that we see as as deeply necessary for sort of the the achievement of the the pragmatic utopian worlds that we're aiming for um but also I think more subtly than that we we see a lot of kind of excitement and interest around alternative economics and, and governance and and technology but that doesn't really have an awareness of and isn't particularly informed by the, the inner dimension. So as well as kind of creating structures that can support inner development, we're also looking at what might bringing that lens to kind of those, those domains um, bring us in terms of, of insight and sort of alternative approaches. So we can really kind of marry up the two. So it's kind of the, the two pincers of our sort of theory of change as it were. Yeah, cool. Um, so one thing that we've been paying a lot of focus to recently is sort of Web3 blockchain technology. So for those that are coming to this, maybe from that angle, they've maybe listened to prior episodes. Maybe this side of life itself is something that they've not, they're not aware of. So I guess so we maybe dive into that wee bit, this pragmatic utopian inner work might be a bit different from stuff we've already touched on. So maybe just digging into that side of life itself a wee bit, because you're right, we sort of got these two pincers, which is something that I think is really cool about life itself. Um, but maybe the, one of these pincers is more familiar to people than the other. So maybe, yeah, could we quickly like dive into that sort of the inner transformational side of things a wee bit more? Yeah, I mean, so I think I, I can dive into that a little bit and then speak perhaps to, to, to how that pertains to our podcasting and kind of like you know explorations more broadly um so the our engagement with kind of the the web3 space i think has come from a real interesting observation around particularly the kind of 
the excitement and the hype and the the money that kind of pervades this you know ecosystem microcosm however one wants to to conceptualize it there's a real deep interest in the power of this technology to, to change society and one thing that's kind of was apparent to us is that sense making in in this area seems to be falling short to put it bluntly kind of there's a lot of complexity there's a lot of hyperbole there's a lot of jargon and therefore there's kind of a lot of sort of incredible aspiration and kind of really sort of profound you know desire projected onto this technology and actually often that's matched by kind of difficulty perhaps to link up the intricacies and complexities of how that technology is going to deliver on those aspirations with kind of the the general feeling and energy that you know this can be a thing um so our, our work there as well as kind of being interested in this intersection of, of technology and society and as i said particularly bringing kind of the perspective that technology is not going to solve all our problems and you know what we um, in fact i think has been dubbed prior but we've kind of adopted the phrase techno solutionism that kind of you know technology is not a, a silver bullet but also this idea of sense making is something that i think is deeply kind of conditions by and a product of the inner dimension you know how you engage with factual information is both around kind of having the the rigorous analysis rigorous analysis available of kind of you know how things cash out what jargon means you know so on and so forth but i think there's also something far more interesting going on around looking at how these kind of social phenomena arise in the first place and you know i think there are a lot of people that are deeply committed to the web3 space that you know we as an organization and individuals love and respect but it is also deeply striking that there's kind of there's almost like a religious adherence to to a lot of a lot of what's going on in the, the projects there so that's kind of partly motivated um, our exploration into, into this area, as well as kind of the, the broader social considerations. Um, and so, yeah, I think our entry, as I say, is one that's kind of inner informed of what are the internal processes which can allow us to, to navigate the very and increasingly complex world around us. Um, with greater capability and with greater efficacy in achieving the social change that I think all of us listening to, to this conversation would like to see happen um, in various forms. Um, so <laughs> which, which area of life and service work were you were you hoping that I'd, I'd explore a little more? No, yeah, I think I think just it's fascinating because what we look at is so broad and I think when you first like I don't know if you if you sort of came to us through like our web3 conversations then you just you might suddenly be like wait like what is this inner transformation like pragmatic utopians but as you just really clearly like um explained is that yeah it just it all ties in and what I love because we host residencies and you'll have some people come along who are like, they teach mindfulness or they're really interested in kind of like that side of things, they're practicing Buddhists. And then you've got people come along who have sort of are really interested in blockchain and how that can be used to sort of fight climate change. And it's really interesting how it all works together. And I think that's one thing that I've really loved learning about through the Web3 project is the sort of aspirations that are at like the root of so much stuff going on here. So it's been great to really dig into that sort of in amongst everything else life itself does. Cause you see how it all connects and I think it's really important, the rigor that we're doing this with to really, yeah, to really analyze, okay, this aspiration is great, but is this working? Is this the best way to do it? And I think it's so easy to get run away with these big ideas. So it's really, it's, I'm really enjoying the fact that we are taking the time to dig into this and that Life Itself Labs is this, this body that is just really at its core is just wanting to like, yeah, dig into things and be rigorous and analyze it. And it's really cool how it fits into everything else that, that Life Itself does. Yeah, and I, I think that that diversity in, in what we're up to is kind of, I'll, 
at risk of using the word microcosm twice in about five sentences, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, uh, a microcosm of kind of the the broader ecosystem that we've kind of we 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 see ourselves as situated in. So, I think one of the really interesting things I noted, and I've said this in previous conversations, is when I you know I didn't really know any of this world existed prior to, to joining life itself and I've, I think I've described it previously and it's like going down the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland and then as you say you've kind of got people that are interested in complex systems in the same room as people that are interested in Buddhism in the same room as people that are interested in blockchain and kind of be like how are all of these guys sort of coming together um, and it's I think so fascinating to see all of these different routes towards kind of often quite comparable and similar aspirations and kind of you know lots of shared excitement about the types of social transformation that we'd like to see happen but very very different kind of approaches to that um and so one of the kind of ways that we are responding to that i mean we we, we did our ecosystem mapping initiative which we've um i think touched on in some of our other work and other, other podcast appearances people might have seen um we were on the stoa if anybody wants to go check that out we had a great chat with peter there so feel free to go have a look um and that's kind of been really eye-opening of this absolute plethora of, of organizations doing amazing and varied work that are all kind of aligned around this broad constellation of social change that we're operating in um, and so one of the things that we're hoping to do with this podcast and sort of this this exploration format that we've trialed around web3 and you know we've found really enriching and we, we've heard feedback that has kind of been really positive is to now expand that outwards to kind of be more reflective of what life itself is up to and the kind of different areas of our work and also kind of the the broader ecosystem that we're sort of engaged in and kind of in this ongoing process of of mapping and understanding and we hope sort of in our own small way contributing to kind of weaving a little bit mm -hmm. um, and yeah having conversations that reflect that that diversity um and expanding outwards from just the this kind of like one area because as you touched on sort of up until now i think our, our listeners could be forgiven for thinking that we were a, a web3 specialist organization and in fact while that's an area of interest it's far from far from the reality yeah far from the only thing we do yeah <laughs> so much going on no it's this like yeah this sort of talk about weaving is something that i think is really great because there's Oh, so much stuff going on out there. So many people doing so many cool things. And yeah, what I really hope for more episodes to come is to bring that to listeners so that it's not just me and you, Theo, who are getting to appreciate everyone out there doing these cool things. Um, and yeah, bring, yeah, expand that a bit. Um, should we agreed i'm back? already bored of my own voice <laughs> um, sorry listeners um so to that end if you've got anyone that you think we should speak to mm. to avoid further episodes of me joining them on then please do drop us a tweet or sort of various <laughs> other other channels and we'll be sure to reach out sorry yeah. over, over to you again no i'm just gonna make you keep on droning on for a bit more <laughs> um life itself labs is something we're kind of newly launching we've already been sort of using it a wee bit using that language a wee bit but it's kind of like a new project a bit and yeah maybe you can tell us a bit about like we've sort of branded our web3 work sort of under life itself labs but there's other stuff you've been working on do you want to maybe tell us a bit about what you've been up to you've been quite busy yeah sure i mean i, I can talk a little to, to how labs came to be mm -hmm. um and then kind of yeah what, what, what else is going on under that those auspices so i mean i think as people that have been aware of the organization for for some time were will know for a while we kind of had the the life itself institute which was the home for more of our i suppose theoretical and research based work particularly focused on kind of shifting broader social narratives so the idea being that kind of through our transformational residential programs we're doing kind of bottom up i suppose transformation of individuals and sort of like small groups which can then sort of permeate out into society and then kind of looking at how we can transform broader social narratives and one of the things that we kind of noticed is that you know writing stuff is great theory is great 
but actually theory needs to be mapped by practice um and rather than just having a place to kind of do you know pure sort of theoretical um work we wanted to kind of develop the sort of that side of our, our work um to reflect kind of a more practical focus so as, as well as kind of doing more more research-based things also implementing sort of projects on the ground which are we hope pushing the world towards and kind of exemplifying what new approaches to, to systems design and you know um governance design might might look like so that's kind of like how we've settled on labs as, as an entity um and further i think to to really hone in on this um yeah the the structural side of, of our work so as, as i touched on be it economics be it governance be it sort of technology and, and society um which was is an area that we've noticed is kind of quite joie de vivre currently um and therefore i think there's a real potential there for sort of quite a lot of impact for those of us that might be coming to that with slightly different perspectives so you know the the old adage of skating to where the puck is going um the the world is very much and i think particularly those of us you know the, the progressive social change space is really engaged at the moment with how we can approach economics differently how we can approach governance differently um and that's really exciting um but once again i think there's also the potential to overlook that kind of much neglected cultural and kind of inner element there mm -hmm. and conceive of these things be they new technologies be they kind of new governance models as being the answer and the way out mm -hmm. without looking at both a the kind of other forms of transformation which need to complement them but also b what they would be contingent on to ever kind of be put into practice at a large scale anyway mm -hmm. namely in, in many cases in my view sort of quite significant shifts in public consciousness and that's something we can we can engage in more more broadly um and so it seems to us like there's quite a strong potential for impact by us kind of engaging in, in these areas and you know we've got backgrounds as, as a team you know rufus of course was our co-founder and my close colleague in this kind of work was a professor of economics a technologist for many years founded the open knowledge foundation has written a whole book on alternative economics for the information age you know myself i have a background in political science and economics, but also philosophy. So looking at how we can kind of merge those those worlds. So it seems like we've got the potential, we hope to, to add some value to that discourse and to what's going on. Um, so that's kind of how labs came to, to be. Um, and I'll pause there and we can talk about the, the various projects under under those, but I've heard my, my own voice too much, so. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, yeah, I think it's really, fascinating this sort of this this idea of how, yeah how it all links together and the fact that there are people out there doing this research into alternative economics alternative governance systems because i know that sometimes it can just kind of seem like ah we seem a bit stuck we seem to be in this rut the news is always the same like things just don't seem to be going well so the fact that there's people out there like doing this work i find really exciting um so yeah, tell us, Theo, <laughs> what are we doing? What work are we doing in this space? What is Labs, what's Labs up to? Yeah, I think one of the things that really excites me about this is that sort of the work we're doing here allows us to step out far more into to mainstream society, I mm -hmm. suppose, for want of a better phraseology, but still do stuff that, that feels quite innovative and quite radical um and you know i'm quite strongly of the opinion I, I know that's maybe not shared by everyone in our in our space that engagement with the world out there as it is now with warts and all is absolutely vital in in order to kind of transmit our our own ideas and kind of you know bring all of this exciting stuff that's incubating within our, our own ecosystem out into the world and kind of you know magnify its, its impact on the ground but i think also to kind of see you know when the rubber hits the road as it were how it actually holds up um you know i'm 
uh, a martial artist in my in my spare time. And one of my favorite quotes, which I, I whip out in almost every conversation I'm in, is the the Mike Tyson quote that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Um, and I think all of us that are engaged in alternative social change could do with getting punched in the mouth a bit more and seeing what happens. Um, so, you know, that's been my masochistic pleasure in, in doing all of this work as well, is that it allows a bit of stress testing, shall we say. Um, so, you know, our, our work's been quite varied thus far. I mean, it's ranged from we've recently finished work supporting GIZ, the German Development Agency, as part of a broader European Commission project. Um, looking at how the sharing of environmental data can be incentivized. So bringing kind of like our expertise around in sort of the economics of incentive mechanism design um, into the context of, of environmental data sharing to support the, the EU's kind of green deal and the, the underlying data platform that, that's gonna support that. So, you know, real world context that are, are very much kind of, you know, a far cry from the, the quite alternative um, contexts that we are operating in usually um, but bringing what are some often some quite you know I would say innovative ideas around how we can do incentivization and how we can open up data and sort of provide more access to more people which is going to be fundamentally so so important for sort of data driven responses to, to the climate crisis um, so that's been incredibly rewarding um, as, as you've touched on kind of our broader web web three sense making project and the explorations around that um but are also sort of really privileged to be offering support to the gfoa the government finance officers association which is kind of the biggest um members organization for local government finance officers across the us and canada to help them kind of explore the implications for for web three and crypto for the local government context and particularly around local government revenue systems so you know people are getting really excited that all the stuff's going on like miami released miami coin to great fanfare and sort of so mm -hmm. unsurprisingly there's sort of very legitimate questions as to oh you know there seems to be an awful lot of smoke billowing around so like where might the fire be um so we're kind of like providing again structured sense making to those stakeholders to help them explore in their context kind of what this stuff is and where if anywhere they should be paying attention um so there's a a couple of examples i mean you know we've done a bunch of stuff previously which i would say kind of now falls under the the labs banner so you know the, the prior work around remuneration rights which rufus particularly his, his book the open revolution touches on how we can restructure our economic systems for the information age. And that's something that's been deeply influential in a lot of our work, including the, the incentive stuff that I just touched on. Um, and that's previously been, been explored through looking at how we might innovate the system of medical patents as well in a sort of a long since past project called IMED, um, which was done before my time, but a, a very interesting one nonetheless. Um, cool. That sounds great. And so we're kind of doing this like new launch of Life Itself Labs. Like we're sort of, yeah, this is a an exciting sort of project. We've definitely been doing work within sort of like that area, but we're kind of like, yep, this is what it's called. This is what we're doing. So do you want to maybe talk about like, what's the future of Life Itself Labs? Like, why are we launching this now? What is there to be excited about? Yeah. I mean, as I said, I think now it's because it kind of feels like this is an a really high leverage area mm -hmm. you know an, an area where there is kind of already a lot of activity and a lot of excitement and and one that that we hope we can we can enter into and, and fundamentally add some value um and bring i think quite a unique perspective by having a team that knows what they're talking about in the, the social science area but also kind of has that, that that lens of kind of, you know, the importance of inner and cultural work, um, which can sometimes be be lost a little bit in, in these discourses, I find. Um, as to the, the future of, of labs, I think, you know, it will, it will depend where the, the wind blows, as it were. I mean, we're, my hope, is that we can continue to bring quite a, a rigorous approach to and like experimentative approach um, 
to kind of the, these design of alternative models, I, I suppose. And so in the long term, I would love to see us be implementing pilots for some of the stuff we're talking about, you know, actually trying out how, um, you know, be it kind of alternative economic models and sort of like the, we're already kind of in shared explorations that I, I recently wrote an article with Professor Jeff Mulgan over at UCL around the really dire need I would we would both argue in fact for kind of rigor and rigorous analysis of what good governance looks like across different contexts in order for us to to really see how the the Cambrian explosion of of governance experimentation that's gone on in the web3 sphere um what actually sticks where um because there's there's been kind of a quite a lot of hype around potentials for all of these new approaches to governance be they DAOs be they you know experimentation with different voting systems um but very little of on how these might cash out in broader society um and very little on what it would take for for things to cash out in, in that way so you know i would and that's both a call for more rigorous analysis on sort of what the the criteria are for for good governance across contexts and how these therefore kind of relate to different governance options that we might have at our disposal but also piloting and, and experimentation and i think that's what the, the the labs sort of moniker really gets at is that thinking is all well and good but we've got to start doing mm -hmm. yeah cool that sounds really great um i love the the thinking is great but we've got to start doing but the fact that also life itself sort of has the privilege to do both um, we've got a beautiful hub in Bergerac where we host residencies. Um, and yes, I would so recommend anyone listening to come and join us for a residency because it's such a good opportunity to meet with like-minded people, but also just uh, like people in sort of all different walks of life doing so many different careers. And yeah, and it's a time to come together and explore lore and chat and discuss um but also yeah with this sort of attachment to the practical side of it like it's not it's not just a bunch of like academics sitting by a fire which <laughs> we do something sit beside a fire we have these like intellectual conversations but I love it that there's always sort of someone there that's like okay and how does this how does this apply to the real world like there's, there's this sort of like grounding ethos to everything we're doing um, like a recent residence we did was making eco spirituality um, accessible with Rupert Reed. So it was kind of having these conversations about spirituality, which is something that I think we first hear and you're a bit like, ah, what does that mean? Like that sounds a bit wishy washy, a bit, but actually discussing proper, like practical ways of engaging people with the climate crisis. And we were talking about a moderate flank, and it's just taking yeah taking ideas that might seem a wee bit out there a wee bit yeah a wee bit wishy-washy but actually thinking of like okay so how can we apply this and like so we've just had a residency it was um interbe insight into being and science so it's we've, yeah it's just such a great crossover and such a crossover that's necessary and yeah i'm really excited to see what labs gets up to in mm. yeah just really getting our teeth stuck into this this area and yeah in a real like practical on the ground on the ground way of doing it yeah yeah i mean absolutely and i think in in the midst of that um you know cheeky and effective plug for the residencies there um, I mean, great why would you want to go to south of france <laughs> um, i think that that touches like the the climate example i think is is the perfect case of you know in my mind this this really deep linkage between mm. the the two portions of our work um, because, you know, on the one hand, companies being able to know how much kind of emissions are, are being generated by their value chains is a super, super essential piece of the, the puzzle for moving our current systems of, of trade and capitalism and all the rest of them as they are now towards kind of more sustainable versions. But on the other side, I think what is fundamentally required for the kind of action that's you know abjectly necessary and quite urgently so to avert catastrophe is significant shifts in 
broad based public consciousness in how we as human beings conceive of our relationships to the environment and you know to the the world around us in kind of a deeper and more holistic sense and you know i think a that is kind of even if you did manage to kind of shift a bunch of your sort of economics and, and governance systems you know i think even if we somehow brought about kind of the the massive levels of carbon tax that are going to be necessary to to keep us under 1.5 and you know <laughs> touch and go on that one to say the least i think without that that broader shift in our understanding and our kind of deeply felt sense of what our, our place on this planet is mm -hmm. we're still not going in it wouldn't in my view kind of achieve a uh, sustainable society in kind of a, a deeper sense you know we'd have averted the catastrophe of of global heating or global warming but i don't i think that kind of like sustainability and living it as sort of like in harmony and at one with nature mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't necessarily mean oh you know we're all going to go back to the land and give up all pieces of our technology and you know fetishizing kind of uh times gone by or anything like that like but i think it's we can be technologically advanced but live kind of with a, a deep reverence for and sort of like awareness of and yeah kind of alignment with the 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 world in in kind of like a, a deep sense and i think only then would we be living as what i would call a sustainable society um yeah. and not only that i also just fundamentally really doubt that we will get the kind of systems and policy change through at kind of the national and transnational level without kind of people waking up to to the reality and having a deep enough shift that they're gonna hold politicians and similar actors accountable for delivering it because mm -hmm. fundamentally i think it is a, a worldview issue mm -hmm. as much as anything else yeah yeah definitely and i guess uh, life itself yeah we're trying to like engage with kind of like all sides of this so we're doing like the yeah let's come together and chat about how we can engage with people's worldviews and things like that but then also with your giz um project just actually like yeah really digging into sort of the the practical like data aspects of it um which is yeah and, and and like the rigor that's needed there is just and that's what i really think is great about the life itself labs is this sort of rigor that we're applying to things and almost like slowing it down i think is something that that we've been doing and i think it's really important is that i feel like so much in our world right now is so fast and everything like snowballs and like i think it's with this with technology it's with just sort of like this consumerist society we live in it's just like we don't have a second to sort of like reflect and be like okay this is the direction we're going in is this direction we want to go in like so I think actually just sort of stopping and taking the time whether that's in a sort of like reflective inner work or whether that's okay well let's actually dig into what's going on here like with the web3 project like We've been having some great conversations with Climadal, so an organization that are using like blockchain technology and on-chain carbon markets to try and address the climate crisis. And it's like, yeah, what you're doing is like, we so see the aspirations behind this and it's so important, but let's actually really look into this and see, is this working? Is this the right way to do it? And I've loved these conversations because they've so engaged with us and we've so engaged with them and you can see like the sort of mutual respect because they're kind of like oh yeah you've, you've done your homework you've kind of looked into what we're doing thanks for this and it's yeah it's just it's great and I love it that life itself labs is sort of yeah taking this rigorous approach because I don't I don't know about you but I just so much I just get felt like everything's moving so fast like let's just slow down so yeah yeah so yeah it's, it's cool. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's, I think that's such a, a good point that you've touched on there. And to my mind, you're kind of, however one wants to sort of call it, be it, you know, you know, your foundational worldviews or your kind of your guiding principles or your, you know, your lineages or whatever, they influence not only kind of the, the world that you aim for and the tactics that you take to get there, but also I think 
kind of in a, in a subtler way, like the, the way of being that you bring to that engagement. And I think that kind of slowing down, that kind of lets the deeper reflection, the kind of sitting with, with things and, and seeing how they, they resonate and, you know, how they kind of look as a, a just old image, as it were, is something that we, yeah, I'm really proud of how we bring that to conversations, which are very far from the the world of the the wisdom traditions that I think inform that as a kind of mm-hmm. yeah a, a collective way of bringing that we bring to those discourses. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I really like where our our hub in in the south of France is just around the corner from Plum Village, and kind of when you visit Plum Village, you'll kind of be wandering around, and then a bell will go, and everybody just kind of stops and sort of freezes and just is there and present for that moment and then the bell goes again and you kind of carry on you pick back up your conversation or you carry on going where you're going and things like that and I think that aspect of hold on guys let's just you know let's pause and think about this um, (laughs) or let's pause and and feel it and and see how this feels Um, I think all of that is kind of that informs our approach to this quite diverse array of issues Mm-hmm. even if kind of the the tools I suppose that that we're using are very much in the kind of like you know rational analytic mm-hmm. sphere and you know are relating to economics in sort of a more traditional sense or so on or so forth I think we we still show up in that way and I you know it's, as you say it's quite a yeah it, it's a really unique and I think privileged thing to to be able to be a part of and it certainly informed a lot about how I engage with these issues mm. Yeah, and it's what I'm excited about, hopefully, future episodes. So we're going to continue with all the Web3 stuff. Um, Yeah, I think we're also wanting to sort of expand who we're chatting to, because we've had some great conversations so far, but there's, yeah, a lot more to still talk about. And everything, as we were saying, is going very fast. Like, like one day, Terra's crashing, and like the next, we're like, okay, we've definitely got something to talk about today. So yeah, we're going to keep these conversations going. Um, but yeah, we're also going to start branching out into some of these other bits and bobs that life itself does, um, which I'm really excited to see kind of how this all goes. Who knows? Well, who knows what we'll who will get on and what we'll touch on? Because, yeah, from Plum Village to Web3 to GIZ, we're doing a lot. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to digging into it all. Um yeah and I think yeah these episodes will have more of a focus I'll, yeah this I think this episode has been so great to really give people a sense of what life itself does and is I think at first glance it can sometimes be like <laughs> what are you doing so much different stuff and very broad but I think I think well I hope at least we've kind of sort of tied it all together and explained yeah what it is we're doing and how it fits together uh, but yeah sort of episodes from now on I think we'll have sort of one person talk to you about their work um, or specific issues we'll delve into specific areas um, and yeah I'm really excited for that um, so yeah I'm sure everyone will be seeing more of me and you Theo um, and whatever guests we get on um, and yeah I don't know if you've got any last things you want to say I think we've covered quite quite a lot in the last wee while but anything yeah. else you not at all. Just, yeah, similarly excited for, for where the conversations go. Look forward to, to opening up uh, the kind of the focus. So, again, always keen for, for recommendations of, mm-hmm. sort of directions we should look in, people we should speak to and things like that. Um, and, yeah, thanks, Hayley, for a wonderful conversation. Mm, lovely chatting to you, Theo. Okay, right. Thanks.